Hey guys, welcome back to some more reviews. I am Horrible Forces 5, aka Nate Murphy, the Explorer of Horror. Here, welcome back to some more reviews. And today, talking about Wrong Turn 2, Dead End. Now, this is a sequel that I love. It's my favorite of the franchise. It's a fun slasher flick. And it's probably the best one in the franchise for many reasons. For me, which, by the way, guys, it gets a 5.5 .5 on IMDb, um, and directed by Joe Lynch. But before I get into that, it's a sequel that I absolutely love. I think this movie is great. Um, it's a lot of fun, lots of gore, lots of crazy death scenes. You get your action, you get your thrills, but you also get really good gore. You also get really twisted moments. You get more hillbillies in this movie. I believe there's, there's three, there's three finger, then there's the family, which is the son, the daughter, and the father and the mother. So about six hillbillies in the film. Well, I mean seven, seven if you count the old man character. But there's about seven, technically speaking, it's about seven bad guys or hillbillies in this film. And that's a lot of hillbillies. And the thing I love most about this movie is that it's one of those sequels that is just such a freaking crazy off the wall time to watch it's so entertaining i mean you've got action you've got gore you've got a lot of horror moments in it you got nudity from this girl right there who was freaking hot so you got nudity i mean you got a big body count you got some really good death scenes really good practical effects they kept all the practical they kept all the effects practical um, the setting in the woods was beautiful. I mean, it, it looks beautiful, and it was great. Um, the score, I absolutely love the score to this movie. Um, this is probably my favorite score of the franchise. Just a very, they took like a, you know, sort of a country score. Not really a country score, but it kind of reminded me of a backwoods score. Um, a lot of usage of, you know, I don't know. I don't know about banjos, but it definitely had a lot of cool songs in it. I don't know how to describe it because it doesn't really use a lot of banjos. I mean, it does. It it doesn't really use a lot of them, but it's got a really good score. I don't know if I'd say banjo score, um, but it's got a score that I really enjoy. Um, kind of a backwoods sort of score. I don't know how else to describe it. It's it's one. It's a score that fits the film really good. Really, really pulse pounding score. It's great. I love it. My favorite score. It was very well directed by Joe Lynch. You have some really cool shots. Like when somebody's running, you see the camera view from their face as they're running. And right there on the side of their head, really, really creative shot. A shot of whenever the girl in the beginning of the movie gets split in half, it's zoomed way out. You know, beautiful shots of the forest, the woods in this movie. It's beautiful. It's practical woods. Um, at least to me, it looks practical. It's a very nice setting, has a very good mood to it, a very good feel to it, has a very fun energy to it, the whole reality, not the reality, I guess it would be not really a reality TV show, but it'd be like a TV show, you know, that you would see on TV about, you know, going through obstacles and, you know, one of those cheesy type TV shows you see on TV. Um, of course, in this, it's called The Apocalypse, and I love the idea of these people going out in the woods to film this TV show called The Apocalypse. And it was handled really well. The idea was very fun. Um, and it, it made it a very fun time to watch. Because there will be moments where they'll trigger an alarm for the reality. I keep calling it a reality TV show. But it's for the TV show. And Henry Rollins in the film. Really, really cool. How his character fights back and puts mud on his face. And gets arrows and a bow. And is shooting it. And he fights and he fights the old man character and blows him. To, which I know I haven't got to the plot yet, but I'm just describing why I absolutely love this sequel. This is my opinion. It's one of my favorite sequels of all time. It's a very very well made direct to video sequel. This actually didn't go in the theaters. It was direct to video in 2007. And for being a direct to video movie, sometimes you can kind of tell it was direct to video. But it was just such a fun time to watch. Um, it's fat. It's very, very fast paced. 
Um, it's about an hour and th it's about an hour and thirty three minutes, so it's not even that long. It's unrated. Lot of lot of lot of gore. Not just some gore. No, there's a freaking lot of gore in this movie, which is freaking great. Um, crazy death scenes, crazy moments, which I'll get into in a second. Henry Rollins, I agree with this in the back, Rollins rules. Um, I also agree with the rest of the, you know, review. Great gore and action, nice twisted moments, and Rollins rules. I definitely agree with that. Definitely agree with that. And I've watched the special, the special features, pretty good. I mean, I don't know, I absolutely love this sequel. I mean, I can go on all day talking about how much I love the sequel. And you would figure it wouldn't be that good because, I mean, look at it. It's a sequel that came out, I mean, quite a bit later. 2004, 5, 6, 7. You know, about four years later. You know? So, the fact that it would come out four years later and being direct to video, you would look at it to where it wouldn't be that good. But it's great. I think it's an amazing movie. I think it's an amazing slasher flick. Like I said, it's one of my favorite slasher films of all time, one of my favorite slasher sequels of all time. It's very, very fun. And no, it doesn't seem like much. I mean, it's Wrong Turn 2, Dead End. It's a directed video sequel. Yes, it is directed video. And yes, at moments you can tell it is directed video sometimes. Sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. Yes, you can tell sometimes. But I feel like it does not get in the way a lot. I feel like it still has a great atmosphere, it still has a great mood, still has a great environment, still has some really great, crazy, you know, practical effects and crazy death scenes. I mean, just a great sequel. I love this sequel. But Wrong Turn 2, Dead End, um, was, by, was directed by Joe Lynch. Now, Joe Lynch really hasn't made much. He made Knights of Bad Astem. Which, it gets a 5.7, and I've heard really bad things about it. So, yeah, I've heard bad things about, you know, Knights of Bad Aston. He made a segment in Chillerama, which I did see. i seen a little bit of that movie. I think i seen the segment that he did. I think I did. I don't remember. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't even finish watching Chillerama. I thought it was pretty unfunny, honestly. I didn't laugh at it and had some pretty bad CGI at times. And then he directed a movie called Everly, which came out in 2014, which apparently is an action thriller, and I guess a 5.1. So, I mean, really, I'm not sure about his about his newer film. Um, well, he's making a movie called Mayhem. But I don't know about his newest film, Everly. So far as this video, Everly, I'm not sure. But I've heard some really bad things about Knights of Bad Astem, and I was not a fan of Chillerama. So I would, I'm gonna go out and say that this is probably his best movie. Um, without a doubt, his best movie. Um, but it's a film that, you know, I think it, when you look at it, like I said, when you look at it, it doesn't seem like much. I mean, it's, it's Wrong Turn 2, it's a sequel, direct to video sequel. It, it came out four years later, um, but it really, really impressed me when I first seen it. And I first seen this on Sci-Fi. I didn't own this on DVD when I first seen it. And going from Wrong Turn 1, which is a straightforward, you know, serious action horror thriller, which is really well done. I really enjoyed the first Wrong Turn. It's not my, it's not like my favorite one, but I can definitely say it's, it's. It's probably, I don't know, probably my second favorite. Probably my second favorite. Uh, but it's much more of a serious tone, straightforward action thriller, uh, action thriller horror movie. Um, and it's not really, it, it has some gory moments, but compared to the sequels, I mean, it's, it's kind of tame. But, you know, when you go from Wrong Turn 1, it's a very, you know, fast-paced thriller horror film. Then you go to Wrong Turn 2, and I sat down and I, and I seen Wrong Turn 2, which came on next. And I love, I love how the film opens with you're seeing letters that form the wrong turn words. Like, you know, you'll see one and then another one will pop up and then Wrong Turn 2 dead end. I love that. Um, but going from Wrong Turn 1 into this film, 
and the opening freaking scene shows a girl getting split in half from here all the way down her gut split out on the floor practically in the opening scene of the film that happens you know you're going to get yourself into a gory twisted time if you if you if that that happens in the first I don't know maybe 15 minutes 10 minutes of the movie you know it man and you get into it and the the, the show kicks in it's a lot of fun you know it's people run around the woods with radiation cards pretty cool which I'll get into the plot a little bit more detail in a second but yeah I mean as far as problems though I really can't say that I have I honestly really can't and it's surprising because it is direct to video. I can say that I have a little, little bit of issues. I mean, maybe sometimes you can tell it's low budget. Sometimes, um, with just it, sometimes it has that low budget um, film look, where you could tell it didn't have a huge budget behind it. It didn't have a major budget behind it. So you had that. Um, the movie does not drag at all. The first movie, I felt like it didn't drag, but it had slowish moments in it that kind of slowed down. But I didn't think it was all out dragging, and it wasn't, you know, and it, and it just wouldn't pick up, and it kept dragging. I wasn't thinking it was like that at all. The first movie, it just had a sort of some slow moments in it, a little bit of slow moments in it. But, you know, then it would speed up, and then again to a chase scene, and then it would, you know... Go into another slow, st another slow scene, and then it pick back up and go to another chase scene. That's sort of like that with this movie. It's fast paced all the way through, all the way through, and you know the plot is extremely simple, but I think it works. I think it's directed well by Joe Lynch. Great shots, great atmosphere. I love the score. I love the atmosphere. I already said that, but uh, I love. The special effects, the deaths are crazy. You get a lot of hillbillies in the woods killing people. Instead of it being like Wrong Turn 3 where it's just, it's two, but then one of them gets killed off like really early into the film. So most of the movie is one mutant killing people. But, I mean, it, it's just, it's such a crazy, twisted fun slasher flick that I love it. I love it so much. I love Wrong Turn to Get In. But anyway, let's get into the storyline. Pretty much the movie opens up. Like I said, you have these letters that sort of, you know, form the, the words Wrong Turn to Get In. It sort of come in from the darkness. It's sort of the way that it was done was pretty cool. Um and the opening scene is you get a girl um driving around, I believe it she's She's gonna be like a one of the biggest stars on here. It's Kimberly. It's Kimberly Caldwell, who is gonna be on this TV show, and she's not really liking it. She sort of, you know, is like, "Oh, well, I better get paid a lot." Of, you know, she pretty much isn't really liking the fact that you know she's on this TV show, but she's on it anyways. And on her way to where the TV show is gonna be filmed at, she makes a wrong turn. And when she makes this wrong turn, she hits this, you know, hillbilly. This mutant hillbilly kid with like a jacket, like a hoodie jacket, not a jacket, but yeah, it was it was like a jacket on, and you know, it's sort of the younger son of the, um, well, really the teenage ish son. I don't know, maybe maybe teenage -ish son. I know he was the son, but he was like a kid. He was like a teenager. I don't remember. I think he was an adult. I think he it, he might have been like 20. But I know that he played the son, Hillbilly uh, Mutant. But the son Mutant comes out and gets hit by the car. And when she goes over, um, she does mouth to mouth, you know. And he bites her lower jaw. And when she yanks back, it rips part right here. It rips this part right here off. And it's really painful to look at because you're seeing all this down here is without, you know, skin anymore. So it's, like, really gory. And she turns around and three fingers right there, you know, lines up like a block, like a block of wood, takes a huge axe and splits her, you know, cuts her, you know, in half. Splits her in half. And her guts fall on the floor. And I swear when I was watching that on TV, 
after Wrong Turn 1, I was just like, oh my god, what the... It, it really kicks you into the film. And then you cut to these people out in the woods. And the thing about Wrong Turn 1, I feel like it, it, it is better than this movie and the fact that there is a better cast in the first movie. I mean, I don't really... I don't mind Erica Learson. Um, Like I said, there's probably only... I would say three characters that I that I liked, and that was Erica Learson, Henry Rollins, the Texas Battle. Of course, Texas Battle would also be in from uh, not from Dust Till Dawn three, Final Destination three. Um, he'd be in Final Destination three. Um, but Texas Battle in this movie plays a likable character named Jake, really really cool, and he's not what you would expect. He's not a jerk, unlike he is in and from Final Destination three, but you know he's he's a good lead. Uh, he's one of those people, and that, and also what I really enjoy about this movie though is that you're not really sure on who will be the lead and who won't be the lead, uh, who's gonna die and who's not gonna. And you know it's it's really cool because you would think that there's sort of this one girl. I don't remember if she's Amber or not, but I know that she's pretty much working behind. I think she's the producer of this TV show, and, you know, she's sort of nervous and stuff like that, and, you know, you find out that her, that her boyfriend, M is cheating on her, and, you know, you think that, um, you think that the character, M is, uh, is cheating, well, actually, he does cheat on her, because he's down by this creek, and a blowjob by this really hot chick in the back here, um, but, you find out that, you know, her boyfriend cheated on her, and they put a little bit, not a lot of depth into the character, but a little bit, so you would think that she'd become the lead, and really enough, throughout, when the movie's, like, about halfway through, she gets an axe to the head, and then you're sort of wondering, okay, so, if she died, and then the M character, he ends up getting killed, which I'll get to in a second, and you start wondering who is going to be the leads, and so it, it narrows it down to the Nina, Jake, and Dale character. And they end up being the last ones alive, and then the Delph character ends up getting killed. And you realize that Jake and Nina are the leads. And it's really surprising, and it's really cool they did that, because it's not typical. It's not your... It's not typical. It's not cliche. It made it different, and I really enjoyed that aspect. Um, but the thing about Wrong Turn 1 is that you had Desmond Harrington, you had Eliza Dukeshu, you also had the two other characters that were with them, the other girl and her boyfriend. They were two likable characters, and they did, a good, they did a good job acting. Here, I really didn't care for anybody else. I mean, you got a lesbian girl. You got a guy who's sort of a dick, kind of a douche. Um, you got you got the M character, who once again is kind of a douche. Um, and then... You have the Dale, Nina, and Jake characters, which are likable characters. But the rest of the cast, I really didn't care for the rest of the cast. The rest of the cast was just those typical people that you would see get knocked off in a slasher, fl in a slasher flick. So that's why I think the first Wrong Turn did better than Wrong Turn 2 when it comes to the cast. And I think it had a better cast when you had Desmond Harrington, you had Eliza Dupeshu. You had those two other people that with them, you know, that were run, you know, that was pretty much with those two characters. Um... You know, the, the other boyfriend and girlfriend character. Um, they're likable characters. They're like a drop acting wise. Here, it's only the Dale, Jake, and Nina characters I really cared about. The rest of the cast, I didn't really care about. Although, I will say though, the, the girl who played this hot chick in the back, if I can get her in a frame, but, um, the girl who played this hot chick, I mean, she was hot. I'll give her that. She's extremely hot. And that's why I give this franchise to. We have some hot chicks in this franchise, like really hot chicks in this franchise. But um, yeah, so I mean, I really didn't care about the rest of the cast, though. Although this girl in the back is hot, I didn't really care for the other actors. Um, I don't know. It, it just felt typical. It, it felt like typical characters. You know, some of them you would think would have been the lead. Some of them weren't going to be the leads. You know, and then. When they do kill the people off that, you know, you think are going to be the leads, and you got to narrow it down, and then, you know, you end up finding that Nina, Dale, and Jake are the, are the leads of the film. And what happens is, they're setting this show up in the woods, and it's called The Apocalypse. You have Henry Rollins giving this really great opening of the show, and he's saying, like, you must survive The Apocalypse. 
and he puts the camera in explosion. It's so cheesy. And you're seeing like he opens up like death, disease, um, plague, war has all caused us to have this wasteland, and now you must survive the apocalypse. And he points at the camera, and explosions happen. It's so cheesy and fun. And then you find out they have these radiation cards, and pretty much what happens if they have to pretty much play this survival TV show in the woods. And they go walking around the woods, and if they activate a radiation card, they have to find a cure because they have radiation. And they take this other this other card and slide into the to the radiation thing. They slide the radiation card into the safety thing and ends up make sure they don't get eliminated. And whoever doesn't get the um, the safety thing, the safety uh, device, ends up getting eliminated from the TV show. And I don't know. I thought it was a fun idea that was just so cheesy, but I loved it. You know, they even have a set built where you have like fake broken and burning cars and you have, you know, fake concrete walls broken down and, you know, um, and like, uh, fake skulls and stuff like that. I thought it was just fun. And it's pretty typical. I mean, it, it, it is, and that's when it kicks into a slasher film. I mean, it already did with the first death scene, but this is when it really kicks in. Um, people get knocked off one by one. Um, one guy ends up getting scalped. And it's really cool where you see it through a security camera. And he's just being scalped and it's practical. Um, there's a de there's destiny that involves two people that get hung up in these ropes. And while they're talking, out of nowhere, a freaking arrow comes out, shoots one through the eye, and shoots the other one through the head. Very, very crazy death scene. Um, and you have... The, the hot chick, she's down at the creek after she's done giving the M kicker a blowjob. The sister mutant comes out and, like, takes a knife and slashes her back to pieces. And you get one of those very, very sick, disgusting moments in the film where the brother character comes down to the creek and he's sort of mad at the sister character, I think. And they start kissing. And later on, you see them having sex in the woods. And it's just such a crazy twisted demented idea but gosh it was just it was sick it, it was just and it was just so unexpected and it was just gross and it was freaking crazy but yeah like the brothers and the sister end up going into the woods and having sex and they find them later on having sex and it's a freaking freaking twisted scene um and you got also another twisted scene where you know, the Eric Learson character and the other girl who he thinks is going to be the lead, they go into this house, they hide in the closet, and you see this, the mom character, the mom mutant, giving birth to um, a mutant baby. And the way the face looks, is all, it looks really, really gross, where there's, like, no eyes, you can barely make out a face, and it's all, and it's practical, too. It's not CGI. And it just looks gross. It's all deformed. And then... You know, they end up getting chased. That's where you get the lead girl, where she's running. And it's a great shot where um, there's a camera right here, and she's running. And, you know, you would figure it would, it would seem silly. No, it actually works very well, at least to me it did. Um, where she's running, and boom, an axe comes out of nowhere, hits you the side of the head. And then you have the awesome part where Henry Rollins, um, he's getting ready to drive off on a four-wheeler. The four-wheeler gets shot by arrows. He's like, you better stand down. And then more arrows fly in. He gets knocked out, wakes back up. Henry Rollins goes and starts killing some of these mutants. He has a fight with Three Finger and shoots him. A lot of punches and stuff like that. Um, goes to the old man's house and fights him. Um, and you know, while he's fighting him, he puts a stick of dynamite in the back pants of in the, in the pants of um, the uh, old man character. And the old man character runs out. And he's getting ready to shoot him, and he just goes. Oh, crap. And then it blows to pieces. And then Henry Rollins goes to the, uh, because pretty much the family has, um, they're pretty much chasing the, um, the Jake and Nina characters. They're chasing them through the woods. There's a moment where the Nina character falls down into a pit, and the Jake character ends up dislocating his arm, but he helps her get out of there. And they run, and they find this sort of abandoned factory place. 
um, where there's a lot of cars at and play and stuff. And while they're there, they end up getting knocked out and kidnapped and taken inside. And while they're there, they're seeing a scene. They're seeing a part where um, they're seeing some footage on a security camera, where it's a very well done scene where you don't really see above the head, but the mutant mom places the camera down. And she grabs a meat cleaver and, and goes over to the M character which is tied to a chair and chops his head off practically. And you don't really see you don't that's the thing is you don't see them you don't see her cutting his, his head off. You just hear the noises and you see the blood pour down and then you know she pulls off the head and shows it to the camera. Very, very crazy scene. Um and pretty much you don't really think that they're gonna survive. You know, they're torturing them. You know, they cut the Jake character. They keep the Nina character in a cage. You know, you have that really, just really disturbing part where it's more of like a family in this film. Because you got mom, pa, and then you got the brother and the sister. And it's more like a family. And, of course, Henry Rollins comes in and helps them out. Um, is shooting some of the mutants. Um, they, even, they even push one of them into a meat grinder. Um, they kill a couple of other ones. Um... But of course, when Ron gets killed, he gets shot by arrows, which is, you know, it, it is kind of lame that, that how that happened, though. I mean, honestly, all that happens is he's fighting these mutants, and this is what I hate about when I do this, and this is one of the reasons why I don't like that film Inside, is when they, they do this, they're having the characters fight and fight, or I don't like it in The Purge either, where they're fighting, they're kicking butt, and then the, in this movie, he gets shot by arrows, and Inside, the mom gets knocked out and gets the baby taken away and, you know, gets C-section on a stair on a staircase. And, you know, she loses. And then, and the purge, Ethan Hawke is beating people up, come around the corner and gets stabbed. And, like, and that's why I hate it about certain if I'm going to do that. And this movie was really annoying, too. Because Henry Rollins is fighting the mutants off. And I know he gets shot in the chest and ends up dying. And then they end up killing a couple other mutants. They're fighting back. The Nina and Jake character, they're fighting everything they've got. Like I said, they push one of them down to meat grinder. Um, they end up killing the other ones. You know, they fight the best they can, and they kill the other mutants. Um, you know, they get out of there. They get a car. They drive off. Um, you get an ending where Sora leads in the wrong turn of three, um, where you see the three-fingered character. He's still alive, and he, you know, takes a severed finger and feeds it to the mutated, to the, like, mutated baby. And the movie ends. So, Wrong Turn 2 is a sequel that I absolutely love. It's a twisted sequel. It's a fun slasher. It's a fun slasher film. A lot of gore. Great character. Well, at least the three main leads were good. And the Henry Rollins, Texas Battle, and Erica Learson. Um, they did a good job in the movie. Um, it's very well shot. It has a beautiful atmosphere of the woods. And it's a sequel that I have a lot of fun with. I love the sequel. Um, so anyways, guys, thanks for watching my review on Wrong Turn 2 Dead End, um, and I'll see you guys on the next review. Bye, guys.